If you've ever fired up the Commodore 128 emulator in Vice, you've been greeted by these two windows and quickly realized the blank one must be the 80 column screen. At which point quickly followed the question, how in the heck do I switch to the 80 column screen? Greetings, it's JC at Basic Bytes, and today I'm doing a tutorial to answer the question of how to use the 80 column screen in the Vice Commodore 128 emulator. This is being demonstrated in Vice 3.5, running on Windows 10. Vice is the versatile Commodore emulator, and it is not only the go-to emulator for Commodore 64 enthusiasts in 2021, but it also emulates a whole range of Commodore 8-bit machines, and it's a great way to check those out commitment-free if you aren't sure whether or not you want to invest in the actual original hardware. The Commodore 128 is one of the most prominent other machines that it emulates, and of course, the 128 has an 80 column screen as one of its main selling features. On an actual Commodore 128, there is a 40 slash 80 column toggle key on your keyboard. When engaged, the computer starts up in 80 column mode, and when disengaged, it starts up in 40 column mode. In Vice, most users very reasonably assume that they should be looking for whatever key on their keyboard is mapped to the 4080 column key, but as it turns out, that is actually the worst way of approaching this because what key it is mapped to, or even if it is mapped at all, depends entirely on what version you're using and what keyboard mapping you're using. Although Vice is an excellent piece of free software, I would nonetheless suggest that the 128 emulator should have an 80 column toggle box somewhere on its user interface in future versions to alleviate this sort of user confusion. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate two ways of using the 80 column screen. I suggest you watch them both because which one is better for you will depend on what exactly it is that you're trying to do, but both methods are easy and neither of them have anything to do with hunting for or assigning mappings to your keyboard. Method 1 is what I will call the software method because we'll be using simple basic commands to switch between the screens. Specifically, we'll be using the graphic command, and if you're not familiar with this one, check it out in your Commodore 128 system guide after this video, as it does a number of interesting things beyond the scope of what we're talking about here, and if you don't have a physical copy of the system guide, a PDF version can be freely downloaded from the internet. For our purposes, the number immediately following the graphic command specifies your graphics mode, which is essentially what graphics screen do you want to see, and number 5 is the number assigned to the 80 column text screen. If I simply run this command, Lo and behold, we have switched over to the 80 column screen. Switching back is simple. We simply issue the graphic zero command, zero being the ID of the 40 column text screen, and we are back. This method is easy to use for software that you are loading from the command line with a deload or some such thing. If it is meant to run into 80 columns, simply type graphic 5 before you load and run your program. There is a second parameter to the graphic command, and that is the addition of comma 1. If you suffix it with comma 1, that tells the Commodore 128 that you wish to also clear the screen that you are switching to as follows. Notice that the 80 column screen blanked as soon as we switched to it, and similarly, a graphic 0, 1 will blank the 40 column screen upon switching back. 
For those of you dabbling with BASIC 7.0, the graphic command can be used in programs as well as in immediate mode, and this is why it astounds me why some Commodore 128 software, upon loading it, goes through all the trouble of checking which screen the user is on, and if the user is on the wrong screen, then informs him that he needs to reset the computer in the correct mode and then reload the software. Using a few simple lines of BASIC, which I will demonstrate here, you can not only switch your program over to the correct screen that it is meant to run on, but you can also leave a helpful hint for the user on the other monitor in case the user's monitor is switched into the incorrect mode. For example, let's say that we wish to print Hello World on the 80 column screen. First, we will switch to the screen that we are not using and blank it. Next, we will print a helpful hint for the user, such as C80 column screen. Then we will switch to the screen on which we wish our program to run. And finally, we will execute our code, print hello world. The question mark is, of course, the abbreviation for our print command as seen in the code above. And if we run this, there it is. We have hello world on the 80 column screen and a helpful hint left for the user on the 40 column screen, just so that a less savvy user doesn't suddenly think that their computer has locked up while the program has in fact switched to the other display. And it makes no difference which screen this program is run from. The behavior will always be the same. If, on the other hand, you wished to enforce usage of the 40 column screen, you would, of course, just flip around a few numbers in your code. And the effect would be just the opposite. The major limitation of using the graphic command is that Unlike the toggle key on the keyboard, your selection doesn't stick. So, for example, if I go to the 80 column screen with graphic 5, and now I reset the Commodore 128, we are straight back into 40 column mode. So if you need the computer to start up in 80 column mode for auto-booting software or that sort of thing, this method will not work well for you, and you'll need to use the next one, which I am about to show you. Method 2 is what I will call the hardware method, quote unquote, because, of course, being an emulator, really, it's all software. But this one, conceptually, is the same as having the 4080 column key on your 128 keyboard engaged meaning that the emulator will actually start up in 80 column mode. To accomplish this, you need to make two desktop shortcuts to the Commodore 128 emulator, which is x128.exe in the bin subfolder of your vice installation. On the first shortcut, you're going to add the 40 call switch, and on the second shortcut, you're going to add the 80 call switch. These command line switches are buried in the vice documentation, but there doesn't seem to be any reasonable way to activate them via the user interface. By way of demonstration, when we activate the 80 column shortcut, We have a Commodore 128 emulator that has just started up in 80 column mode. The reason why you need two shortcuts is because much like toggling a physical key, the emulator will remember the last setting of this switch. So if we close the emulator and then we run it again without any switches at all,
It now automatically starts up in the 80 column mode, being the last mode that it was stuck in, so to speak. To get back into 40 column mode, we activate the other shortcut, which specifies it explicitly. Thus disengaging our imaginary 4080 column key and Bob's your uncle. Well, that's almost it for this episode, but I shall leave you with this bit of code which engages subliminal messaging on both displays. If you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe to Basic Bytes for more. Also, if you're interested in seeing the internals of an actual Commodore 128's 80 column video system, check out my video from November where I explain its various components and how I repaired a broken one. Thank you for watching.